Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, May 26th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Hustle writer Juliet Bennett Ryla, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Later in today's episode, they say love ain't easy. They should say it ain't cheap, especially for bridesmaids and groomsmen for whom a variety of economic factors have made things really, really quite expensive. We're going to talk about that in the ongoing wedding boom shortly. But before we get to all that, a couple of quick things you should know in the business and tech world. Let's get crack lacking. Juliet, how we doing? Good. Uh, the thing I'm looking at today is Niantic released its visual positioning system software for augmented reality. Okay. And what is that? <laughs> so Niantic is behind what's probably the most successful implementation of augmented reality, which is Pokemon Go. Very good game. Yes. Now Niantic will let other creators use the software to build AR apps that are tethered to physical locations. So instead of just like a random object appearing on your phone screen or wherever, they would only appear in a specific place. And apparently, according to The Verge, Niantic was able to crowdsource phone camera scans from players of their other games and build a network of 30,000 VPS locations worldwide. That's a lot. Yeah. And this is how I would envision people might use this. So let's say you have some sort of place. Let's say it's historic or very scenic, like it's a park or it's like a old house that you've like a living museum from like the 1800s. Sure. And you want to teach people about it, but maybe you don't always have a docent present and you definitely don't want to put a bunch of signs everywhere and you don't want to print out a bunch of pamphlets that people are just going to throw in the trash. Right. So what you could do is offer a location based AR experience that guides people with extra visuals and audio. And that could be pretty cool. Some other applications, you can also create multiplayer games or theatrical experiences that people can do outside together. So it's considerably more accessible and social than VR. So I could really see this taking off among people who are like, hey, let's all go out and do something together outside, play a game, what have you. Right. And also I was reading with this, they're releasing their own app called Campfire, which plays on that in a really strategic way. Basically, a, just a social app. I think it's pretty similar to just like a messaging app. Mm -hmm. But it can connect with all your friends who also use apps that use this technology. And like you said, they can look at what's on the calendar for one of these events or one of these experiences and decide to meet up through this app. So I agree. I think this is a really cool use case and really cool tech. And this is the kind of thing people will get really creative with. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen AR in museums. I've seen AR in a lot of immersive experiences. And a lot of people say like, oh, like technology just on your phone. You're not interacting with people. People, but I honestly feel like I never saw more people in the parks together than when they were playing Pokemon Go. Oh, so. my God. There are videos yeah. I remember, like, people <laughs> in Central Park, hordes of, like, 400 people running through Central Park to, to find a Pokemon. Yeah. So what are you looking at today? Yeah. So I was looking at what is going on in China, because right now there are some pretty intense COVID lockdowns happening across China. Very intense. You could see some footage of people literally being locked in buildings mm -hmm. to prevent the spread of COVID there. And this obviously, unsurprisingly, has not been good for consumer spending in China. And, you know, people going out to stores and things like that. Most stores and malls in major Chinese cities have been closed for a few months now. And get this, in the U.S., April retail sales were up 8.2% from last year. Okay. In China, they were down 11%. So mm. very different. And just for some example, Starbucks has 5.4 thousand locations in China. Q1 sales for Starbucks there dropped 23%. For Adidas, sales dropped 35% for Hilton fell 45%. And earlier this week, I just thought this was an interesting kind of coincidence. Airbnb said it decided to remove all mainland China listings due to a lack of demand there since its launch in 2016. But certainly the pandemic and all this has not helped. But in other news, Dick's Sporting Goods cut its earnings outlook, citing inflation, tighter margins, waning consumer demand. The company said overall sales dropped 7.5% year over year. Look, it's a big business. They reported $2.7 billion in first quarter revenue. They have almost 900 stores, and I'm a big fan of the store. But when I see things like this, I just worry they're going to meet the same fate as jewels like the Sports Authority and Models, and I just hope they don't. Anyways, moving on, Walmart said it's expanding its rapid drone delivery partnership with DroneUp, yes, that exists, to 34 sites across Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Texas, Utah, and Virginia, enough 
to cover 4 million households. That's up from just one town in Arkansas when it launched in 2021. First thing I thought when I read that, wait, they have an entire town in Arkansas? Yeah. I'm just kidding. But anyways, these drones are packed and flown remotely by people at a Walmart, and they can carry items weighing less than 10 pounds. Moving along, Elon Musk's SpaceX says it now has over 400,000 worldwide subscribers for Starlink, its satellite internet service, up from some 250,000 subscribers back in March. Starlink serves 36 countries right now, and it's working to add customers in much of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East next year. And speaking of, a new filing revealed that Elon Musk plans to put up $33.5 billion in his bid to take over Twitter with financing help from former CEO Jack Dorsey, who is pro-Musk taking over Twitter, as well as some help from others. Now, Twitter stock jumped on the news. We'll see what happens in the markets tomorrow. And with that, as I said before, they say love ain't easy, but I think love ain't cheap is actually more accurate. Let's discuss the economics of weddings and wedding parties, which are getting out of hand. So being asked to be a bridesmaid or a groomsman should be, I feel like, an honor, right? It's a good thing. Uh, yeah, typically it means that they trust you to be in their wedding photos for decades on. So Right. But thanks to a number of factors, more people are looking at the role as a pain in the ass due to the high costs it entails. So on average, according to some new data from LendingTree, bridesmaids and groomsmen are spending $825 just to be part of the wedding party. Mm -hmm. And some of the factors contributing to that expense include rising fuel prices, right? They've made traveling to bachelor, bachelorette parties and weddings much more expensive. In April, flight prices were up 33% year over year. You also have inflation, made everything more expensive. <laughs> it led to increased costs for wedding attire. 32% of bridal party members say wedding attire is their biggest cost. And then you have supply chain issues, which have led to limited inventory for wedding attire, complicating matters further. So as a result, 50% of Americans who have participated in a wedding party have incurred debt to do so. 40% regret spending some of that money, understandably. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I feel like every single person I know who has talked about being in a wedding has at some point complained about how much it costs to be in said wedding. Right. Because it's like... It's not your wedding. Right. And a lot of the clothes that you would wear, you're not picking out a, a dress or a tux or colors that you like. You're doing what they like. And then right. you have to pay a bunch of money. And then, I don't know, are we ever going to wear that again? Probably not. Exactly. Yeah, definitely not. So, And making matters worse, this year, there are expected to be 2.6 million weddings in the U.S. compared to 2.2 million weddings in 2019. And why that is, is really just because of COVID, right? There's a lot of postponed weddings, postponed ceremonies during the pandemic. And that means there's a good chance that some bridesmaids and groomsmen will take on those duties in more ceremonies than they might have otherwise, uh, which would mean an even steeper financial burden. But, uh, you know, just because you get asked, obviously doesn't mean you have to say yes. Uh, roughly 20% of people who are asked have turned down a wedding party invitation. And of those folks, 69% say the decision didn't hurt their relationship with the bride or groom. Frankly, I don't believe that for half a second. But uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, you know, I have never been in a wedding party. Mm. I feel like I got really lucky because everyone to where like I was close enough to potentially have been asked either had a Zoom wedding over the last two years. Oh, interesting. Or, you know, it was some sort of situation where, where they were like, we're just going to elope. But one of my friends was marrying someone who was an immigrant. And so it was just much easier to just do the courthouse thing and, and get all the mm. paperwork done. So I've really lucked out, honestly. Like, it just seems like a big ask. <laughs> It is a big ask. Well, what mm -hmm. uh, when you say Zoom wedding, what do you mean exactly? Like they got married in a very small ceremony mm. with just their witnesses present. And then if you wanted to watch over Zoom, sure. you could do that. Yeah. Or they didn't even bother doing the Zoom thing. And they were just like, well, in a couple of years <laughs> when everyone can travel again, we'll just have a big party. Yeah, for sure. All right, bada bing, bada boom. That's going to do it for us today, folks. If you liked what you heard, we've got a lot more tech and business coverage over at thehustle.co. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla. Thanks for tuning in to The Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. See you tomorrow.
Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.